to God. Welcome, Fairfield. Good morning. Good morning. It's so good to have you here. So glad that you could be with us this morning. All first time visitors, wave your hand. Look at there. Glory to God. Glad to have you here with us. Hallelujah. What I would like for you to do, first time visitors, you waved your hand. Uh, first time visitors online, just put in the chat that I'm a first time visitor. We welcome you. Now, those that are around the new visitors and others, take out your phone. We're going to take a selfie. We're going to take a selfie. Come on, let's show community. Let people know that you still have time to get here. Hallelujah. Because you know what? The Lord has a word for us today. And we are so glad to be here. Glory to God. Take that selfie. Hallelujah. 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 And our first time visitors, we're here. We're here with open arms, just waiting on you to come back, okay? And those that are here every Sunday and you still have not made up your mind, let me tell you, open up your heart and let the Word of God take root in your heart and you will become a part of this branch of Zion. Amen? Amen. Now, we have prepared a special song just for you. Let us stand. Come on, Fairfield. Let us stand. Magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man, blessed is the woman who trusts in him. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. The has made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice. We will open up our mouths. We will lift our hands and be glad in it. One day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Come on, if you're glad to be in the house of the Lord, you ought to say so this morning. If you're glad to be in the presence of the Lord, you ought to say so this morning. Could have been dead, should have been dead. But here we are on another Lord's day. Somebody ought to give God praise today. The Lord has kept us. The Lord has blessed us. The Lord has sustained us. It's of no goodness of our own. Worthy is the Lamb 
who takes away the sin of the world. Hallelujah to God. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our God. Well, good morning, Fairfield. Say good morning to your neighbor. What a joy and what a privilege it is to be in the house of God. To all of our first time friends, we thank God for you. We know that you could have worshiped anywhere and yet your steps have been divinely directed by our God to be with us today. It is our hope and our prayer that something is said that will resonate with you and carry you throughout the balance of this week. And it is our prayer that if you are in search of a church home that you would prayerfully consider Fairfield Baptist Church where we are striving to be a whole people taking the whole gospel to the whole world. Now, perhaps you are in search of making the next step in your relationship with God. Well, look no further. It is our prayer that at the time of invitation that you would step out on faith and choose Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. But for whatever reason drew you here today, we are just grateful for your presence. And Fairfield, I invite you one more time to join me in welcoming all of our first-time friends. Amen. Just a few pastoral observations at this time. Let me say thank you to all of those who came out to our small group kickoff last week, last Tuesday evening. It was an awesome, awesome time of fellowship and gathering. And we invite you uh, to please mark your calendars for Tuesday, January 30th at 7 p.m. for our small group leader training. We nominated small group leaders, and so we want you to come on out and be trained so that you can know how to facilitate our small group discipleship classes. And if you have not yet joined a small group, please visit our website, fairfieldbc.org, and sign up to be a part of this Bible study and fellowship experience. Amen. Let me also say thank you to the Moms Ministry for spearheading the Wing Sisterhood Soiree yesterday. What a wonderful, wonderful gathering. I tried my very best to sneak in, and I was told that I was not permitted. Um, but I heard it was a good time anyway. And so we are so excited about what's happening in the lives of the sisters here at Fairfield Baptist Church. And again, we salute moms for giving leadership in that regard. Amen. Would you join me in thanking God for them? Amen. And also, brothers and sisters, I invite you to mark your calendars for Wednesday, February 14th at 7 p.m. Now, I realize that that is Valentine's Day. And uh, some of us may have plans already, and that is fine. Uh, but if you are available around that time, if you have already celebrated Valentine's Day and you have time in your schedule, I invite you to journey with me uh, to the Pleasant Grove Baptist Church in Marietta, Georgia at 7 p.m. for their Ash Wednesday service. Looking forward to celebrating with Dr. Sammy J. Dow and the wonderful people of Pleasant Grove. And that is, again, Wednesday, February 14th at 7 p.m., for Ash Wednesday worship. And also our deepest sympathy to Sister Betty Sanders and the passing of her mother. A celebration of life service will be held Saturday, February 3rd in Nashville, Tennessee. And I'm also asking that we would, in a very special way, lift up Sister Mary Giles in the passing of her husband, Brother Arthur Giles. And that service will be held on Friday, February 2nd here at Fairfield Baptist Church. And to all of our bereaved families, we are lifting you in a very special way. We want you to know that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. And so we remember you today and always in a very special way. For all of the announcements, brothers and sisters, we invite you to consult our website as well as to kick the tires on our social media sites so that you may stay apprised of all of the happenings here at Fairfield. Amen. It's offering time in God's house. And how blessed we are of God to be invited to participate in what God is doing in the world. It's amazing to think that God thinks so much of us that we are included in his large providential plan of redemption for the world. What a blessing it is to be entrusted with such a great responsibility. And that includes more than our finances, brothers and sisters. It, it really includes the total surrender of our entire lives. Everything that we have 
And everything that we are belongs to the Lord. I don't know about you, but I am so glad that I belong to God. Have you thought about that? You belong to God. I, I know that we have convinced ourselves that we are in charge of taking care of our affairs. That we are in charge of paying bills. We are in charge of, of feeding ourselves. But Jesus gets in and reminds his disciples Take no thought for what you will eat or what you will drink or what you will wear. For God, God clothes the grass of the field. And God arrays the flowers who are more radiant and dressed in greater splendor than even King Solomon. And God takes time out of running the cosmos to give food to the birds. And are you not more important than grass and, and flowers and birds? And if God takes care of the grass, if God takes care of the flowers, and if God feeds the birds, how much more so will God take care of you, his own, ch his own child? I am so glad that I belong to the Lord. And when we come to this time of giving, I am reminded in my own life that it is God who takes care of me. When you give back to God, you never lose. I know what you're saying. When I write this check, I'm going to lose some money from my bank account. I'm going to lose some cash from my wallet and from my purse. No, no. When you give to God, you don't lose anything. Because when you surrender what you have into the hand of God, God's hand, which always remains open, gives it back to us in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I'm just trying to tell you that when you give back to God, God always gives it back 30, 60, and even 100-fold. So here's my challenge to all of us today. Let's step out on faith and trust God in the area of our giving. To all of our first-time worshipers, this is the only offering we receive. If you care to give, we invite you to do so. We are a Bible-believing church. We believe that if you cast your bread upon the water, that it will return in as many days. It's a joy to give. And then we have challenged ourselves as a faith family to give above and beyond our general tithes and offering toward our 4321 mortgage elimination campaign. We're striving to eliminate $4 million in three years to God's glory as one church. Two years ago, we were looking at the mountain of $4.35 million. And today, God has blessed us to watch that mountain come down to $1.954. I just feel like David. I've got my slingshot. And I'm taking aim at Goliath. Every time we give, I just, I'm not, I'm not pulling cash. I'm just, and the one thing about David, David was standing with a shaky army behind him. He was standing in front of a scared army. But I have enough faith to believe that the Fairfield army ain't never scared. Hello. I got a few folks with slingshots today. I believe that it is already done according to our faith. And that December 31st will be a day of celebration in the life of our church family. And so we recite our stewardship confession that tells us what we give, why we give, and the blessings tied to our giving. Let's recite it together. I am a cheerful giver and a bountiful sower. I am committed to giving my time, talent, and tithe. I believe that God is the source behind every resource. I believe that God will supply all of my needs and make all the grace abound toward me. Lord, we love you, we thank you, we praise your name as we give in tiptoe anticipation of receiving your promises. We know that if we take care of your house that you will take care of our houses. And so God, we pray that you would stretch us in the area of our faith. We pray now, Lord, that there will be no lack in our homes, that there would be no lack in our houses, in our finances, God. The cattle on a thousand hills belongs to you. The silver is yours. The gold is yours. 
And so we trust you even now. And so we pray that you would bless us in our giving as you sustain us in our living. We believe that it is done because you are a God who keeps your promises. We love you. We thank you as we give by faith even now. In Jesus' name, amen. The music ministry will bless us, and after which glad will come. And then I'll return with the morning message. Let the church say amen.
Come on, put your hands together. Y'all can't sit down on this. Y'all got to get up. We're going to go to war a little bit. Can't sleep on this one. You got to put your clothes on. There's so much attacking going on. You got to be ready. I got joy in my soul, God is in control, got Satan on my trail, and I'm singing all is well, he's attacking every day, but I'm watching while I pray, no matter the attack, I won't turn back, this big war, come on, put your hands together, this big war, this means, this big war, this means, I'ma say it again. I got joy in my soul. God is in control. I got Satan on my trail, but I'm singing all is well. He's attacking every day, but I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means, this means. Come on, this means, this means, I plead, I plead the blood, I plead, I plead the blood, there's power in the blood, there's healing in the blood, there's power in the blood, this means, Through the stormy rain, but the blood still stays the same. Whatever's going wrong, my world clothes are on. I might be in a daze, but you can't stop my praise. This means more. This means, this means, come on, this means, I plead, I plead, I plead, I plead, I plead, I plead, I plead the blood, there's power in the blood, there's healing in the blood, I plead, I plead the blood, there's power in the blood, this means Come on This means This means Hey, this is my favorite part here You gotta tell them You can't have my family You can't have my increase Put your hands together and pray. Cause this is a praise song. Hey, you can't have my family. You gotta tell her. You can't have my increase. You can't have my breakthrough. You can't have my. You can't have my. You can't. You can't. You can't. I plead. I plead. I plead. There's power in the blood. There's 
Come on, can you help me encourage glad today? And a little child shall lead them. Some of you are wondering what's happening right now. The Holy Spirit is having his way through the lives of our young people. He's worthy to be praised. We bless his name. Hallelujah. His presence is here. And it would be inappropriate for me to interrupt what the Lord is doing right now. And I invite you to move from spectating to participating by lifting your hands and just begin to bless his name for his goodness in your life, for his loving kindness shown toward you. Come on, he's been better than that. Don't worry about who's beside you. Don't worry about who's looking at you. Forget about yourself and concentrate on him and, and worship him. Not just for what he does, but for who he is. And I bet the more you think about it, the more you'll begin to thank him. I said the more you think, the more you'll begin to thank. What am I thinking about, Pastor? Think about how he fed you when you were hungry. What am I thinking about, Pastor? Think about how he never left you when folks walked away. What am I thinking about, Pastor? How he forgave me and 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 forgave me. I come to one conclusion, he's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. The name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. Well, consider this your reminder that this is not a talent show. This is not a performance. We've come to worship him in the beauty of holiness. We've come to worship him in spirit and in truth. We thank God for the visitation of his Holy Spirit today. And let me suggest to some of us who, who believe that there are some Sundays that are better to attend than others. I know I got some first and third Sunday folk. There are no restraints on when the Holy Ghost shows up. And wherever the Lord shows up, that's where I want to be. We reverence his name today. Anybody grateful today? I mean, really grateful. I mean, I mean, really grateful. Anybody got to thank you in your spirit today? Did anybody come to tell the Lord, thank you? Much obliged. Thank you, sir. Thank you, you're a keeper. Mind regulator, heart fixer. 
bridge over troubled water. Thank you, sir. If I had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough. We thank you today. So many doors you've opened. So many ways you've made. So many times you've healed me. You've been better than get so many doors you've opened. So many ways you made. So many times. So many times you filled me. You've been you've better been than better good. Than So many doors. So many times you filled me. Buried some folks, but so many ways. Lost my job, but so many times. I've got one conclusion. You've been better. You've been better than good to me. You've been so good. You've been so good. I'm getting to this word, but you've been so good. You've been so good. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. So good. Sometimes I don't even have the words. Tears have to do my talking, but you've been so good. My hands go to waving because you've been so good. Feet get to running because you've been so good. Just encourage yourself. Remind yourself, he's been so good to me. He's been so good to me. I don't know what he's been to you. I don't know what he's been to you. But he's been so good. So good. So good. your way. Come on, just take a minute to testify. You've been so good. We got to move, but Lord, you've been. When I wanted to let go, I wanted to give up. I would have fainted, lest I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. Though he slay me, Yet will I trust him. Thousands shall fall at your right side. Ten thousand at your left. But it won't come near you. The Lord is your keeper. He's your shade at your right hand. He's been so good. 
The sun will not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. He's been so good. I can smile about it now. I can shout about it now. I can give God glory through it now. You've been so good. Grab your Bible. I wish I had a so good church this morning. <laughs> Yo, Hans, if we don't leave it alone, we're going to stay here. I'm telling you. days into the new year. So good. Matthew 14.
to give you the skeleton today and uh, let you fill in the meat on your own. I want to lift uh, one verse as we continue in our series, Faith to Keep Pushing. I want to look at verse number 13. Now, when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today I want to talk about pushing past grief. Pushing past grief. Thank God for our ushers and our youth ushers today. To be honest with you, I have lost count how many homegoing services I have officiated. I stopped counting how many eulogies I've delivered. One of the realities of life that hits us over and over again is the fact that death comes to all of us. I don't care how much you shout. I don't care how much scripture you know. I don't care how much money you have. How degreed you might be. It hits all of us. And death comes in a myriad of ways. For some, it comes after a period of great suffering. For others of us, it comes as quite a surprise. And yet one thing is true. It comes to all of us. The hard thing about being in the church, specifically leading in the church, or in any field for that matter, is that quite often we are called to put our grief to the side because other people need us. And where do you go when you need people but people are pulling on you. As we consult this text today, I do so with a great deal of sensitivity and compassion, knowing that for some of us, whether in this space or worshiping with us online, are affected by the grips of physical transition. And yet, even in the midst of our sadness and our struggle, I believe that Matthew 14, nestled within the confines of this particular pericope, we find a word of hope and assurance that through our brokenness, that God is able to still do beautiful things. Amen. 
quite often well-meaning people would suggest to us while we are grieving to push past your grief. And it resonates with profound insensitivity as if there's an expiration date on grieving. Can I free 50 of us today? I'll make 51. That grief is love beyond the disruption of death. And I don't care how long you live. There is no expiration on loving somebody. Don't let anybody make you think that because it's been three weeks or three months or three years or three decades that your tears should stop. What we find here in Matthew 14 is what scholars call synchrisis. It is the juxtaposition of two seemingly contradicting texts. In the first pericope of Matthew 14, we find that John the Baptist has been beheaded. And then in the next pericope, we find that there is a great multitude that has been fed. In the first pericope, there's a party that Herod throws. And in the next pericope, there is a party that Jesus throws. It juxtaposes kingdoms of the world against the kingdom of God. Or more pointedly, King Herod against King Jesus. One of the great disservices that we have done throughout the years is that we have lifted the feeding of the 5,000. And with certainty, it should be. It is one of the few miracles that is recorded in all of the gospel accounts. Jesus has compassion on a throng of hungry people. And with little to no provision available, he finds a little boy's lunch, two fish and five barley loaves, bigger, no bigger than some rich crackers. And he takes it. He blesses it, he breaks it, and he gives it back. A foreshadowing of the Last Supper. And we celebrate that after all were fed and satisfied, that there were 12 basketfuls left over to authenticate that in the kingdom of God, there is never any lack, and there is always sufficiency. And we shout, and we celebrate, and we rejoice when we reflect upon all that the hands of Jesus have produced. And it is laudable. It is amazing. But the one thing we never consider the one fact that I have missed even in my own discipleship journey and pastoral ministry is that this great feast was produced in the throes of Jesus' own grief. Jesus breaks bread while his own spirit is broken. What if, what if, what if this text is really designed to help us to see 
that God gets the greatest glory out of us. Not when we are whole. But when we surrender ourselves while broken. I know you all are saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled. And you only watch the Word Network and Daystar and BT on Sunday mornings. But if you have time, I invite you to consult one of the great cult films of our time, The Five Heartbeats. It was in The Five Heartbeats that Donald Duck Matthews struggled to find his way as a writer and performer. And, and his writing came under severe critique because it lacked something. There was something in his writing that did not connect with lovers of music. And he was given some advice that initially offended him. The advice was this, the criticism was this, that, that Donald Duck Matthews will be a great writer when he suffers more. And I don't know what it is about saints and suffering. But we do all that we can to avoid suffering. We do all that we can to adopt imposter syndrome to make broken people feel like we got it all together while we're broken ourselves. What, what if, what if the difference between where you are and where God wants you to be is your willingness to fully surrender your life to him before you can get yourself together. What, 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 if, what if the difference between where you are and where God wants you to be is the realization that you can't get yourself together. And the only way to become whole is to surrender the fullness of your life in its broken state. Consider the news that Jesus receives. In the first pericope, we find that John the Baptist has been beheaded because he has been speaking against Herod's marriage to his wife. Not only was he married to his brother's wife, but according to tradition, he was also her uncle. And the prophet John the Baptist spoke against this because this was against Jewish law. Matthew's account of the gospel, of all the gospel accounts, is the most Jewish leaning in its traditions and in its offerings. So this message that the prophet offers irritates Herod, but Herod has such respect for John the Baptist that even though he kind of wants him dead, he leaves him alone because John the Baptist has the backing of the people. Herodias wants him dead as well. But Herod won't touch John. One day, Herod throws a great party. He throws a feast. This party was so amazing that everybody wanted to be there. Ladies got in free before 11. Flyers were posted on everybody's windshield. And everybody wore their best. Beyonce's recommendation of attire for sisters was offered. She told all the sisters what to have on and said every woman got one. You'll get that on our 20. Everybody wanted to be there, but only certain kind of people were invited. And as the entertainment for the evening, Herodias' daughter begins to dance. And everybody is inebriated. The king's wine has been offered. Can't you see Herodias' daughter? Her waist is twisting and her hips are dropping. 
The sound of the beads are echoing as she moves. I'm still in the text. Her hair is flowing and her arms are waving. She's making eye contact seductively with all of the male attendees. She's, she's dancing. Her heels are high and clear. She's, I'm in the tick. She's dancing. She's, the music has slowed down. Everybody knows the tune. Can you hear the DJ on the ones and twos as he's playing I'm Just a Bachelor looking for a partner? Y'all been in church every day of your life? She's dancing and she dances so well that Herod says whatever you want you can have. It is at that moment that the king of the south starts playing on the ones and twos. You can have whatever you like. <laughs> I promise you I only listen to 102.5. <laughs> he says to her, you can have whatever you like. And she doesn't know what to ask for. And so she goes to her mother knowing that Herod has made an oath in front of all of the guests. It is a public oath. And she comes back and says, I want the head of John the Baptist. And so reluctantly, John the Baptist is beheaded. The disciples of John the Baptist come and claim his body and they bury it. And then they go and tell Jesus. Jesus receives some of the worst news that he has ever heard. His cousin beheaded. The one who had sent word to him while he was in prison. Are you the one or should we look for another? His, his cousin. The one who baptized him in the Jordan when the heavens opened up and the spirit of the Lord descended like a dove and the voice cried out saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. John, John is dead. And Jesus receives this news. And the only thing he wants to do is get away. Have you ever been there? I don't want to talk. I don't want to hear no scripture. I, 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 don't, I don't want to hear they're in a better place. Don't ask me what you can get from the house. I just want to get away. I just, I just want to clear my mind. The Bible says that he, he goes away by himself to a deserted place. There's nothing there, no Wi-Fi there. All he wants is to be by himself. And yet the word gets out where he is and all of the people from the towns come to where he is. And here's the problem. They are not people who can give to him. They are people that pull from him. I'm trying to help you this, to see the kind of stress that Jesus is under. When you don't have nothing left to give and folk still pull on you. Where do you pull from when you don't have anything from which to pull? Can I go old school? Nothing from nothing leaves what? You got to have something. Hello. All 
he wants to do is be by himself. He's received some of the toughest news that he's ever heard and received in his life. And now he's put in a position where although he wants to be by himself, needs to be by himself, he's surrounded by people who need him. How do you push through your own grief? When you need to be by yourself, when you should be by yourself, but the assignment on your life causes you to be available to people when you don't even have anything to give. I'm broken. And you're pulling on me. I'm crying and you pulling on me. I went by myself to get away from y'all. You found me. And you pulling on me. Sometimes, sometimes it's just hard to be used by God and to be called by God because we are not used at the convenience of our own schedule and feelings. Might I suggest to some of us who really want to be used by God in an amazing way, you you really ain't been called to preach, but you want to. You haven't been called to leadership, but you want to. Understand that you will be volunteering for a level of brokenness that you cannot comprehend until you are in it. But what if, what if it is through our brokenness that God is able to get the greatest glory from our lives? What if this text is less about broken bread and more about broken preferences? I'd rather be by myself, but God, I'm called to serve. I'd I'd rather wipe my own tears, but I'm called to be a tear wiper. and, And by no means am I suggesting that you forego mental health treatment and therapy. By no means am I suggesting that you neglect yourself, but what I am suggesting to you, brothers and sisters, is that even in our brokenness, God calls us to be of service even when we don't feel like we have the strength or dexterity because we don't do what we do in our own strength, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. It's amazing to me that the hinge that is affixed between the swinging doors of these pericopes is Jesus' own grief and suffering. They follow him on foot from the towns and Jesus sees a great crowd and and he has compassion for them. Imagine how deep the suffering of the people had to be for Jesus to pull himself out of his own grief party to see the needs of other people. It's easy for us to become a fix to what's going on with us and to look inward. But, 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 but when you decide to wipe your tears and look up and realize that suffering ain't reserved for you, that there are people around you, that God has equipped you to help and to bless, it'll make you realize that as, as difficult as my situation might be, there's still somebody who has it worse than I got it. There was an old song where a sister was singing about how blessed she was, and she said, I once complained that I had no shoes, but then I saw a man who had no feet to use, and I realized that I'm blessed. When you decide to look outside of yourself, even though you might be broken, you can see that there are others who also share in the suffering of brokenness. 
Herod's party, only the people who had it together were invited there. Only the people who seemed as if their lives were whole and complete and entire were invited. But I love what Jesus' party shows us. Jesus' party shows us that, that the broken are welcome, that, that the hurting are welcome, that the suffering are welcome. And we don't have any king's wine. All we have is, is fish and, and barley loaves. But everybody is welcome at this table. And oh, brothers and sisters, that's why you and I ought to rejoice. I know some of us think that we come into church whole. I know that some of us think that we are over this and because we survived that, that our lives are complete and pristine and whole and entire. But I've come to let you know that the church is not a place for the whole. The church is a place for the broken. That's why we say that we're striving to be a whole people. It is the acknowledgement that there is something wrong with all of us, that there's something broken within all of us. But thanks be to God, I'm so glad that I am in the company of the broken this morning because it is in the place of brokenness that we're able to find wholeness. It is in the place of brokenness that we're able to find restoration. It is in the place of tears that we discover that he's faithful to wipe every tear from your eyes. Is there anybody here grateful and able to admit that although I'm broken, I know somebody who's able to put me back together again? I'm able to push past my grief, not because it's easy, not because I'm over the loss, but because I know that it is through my brokenness that God is able to do something in, with, and through me that I don't have the strength to do myself. And can I say it this way? My brokenness does not disqualify me from being used by God. I, I, took, I took the children to breakfast one Saturday. They love going out to eat, and if anybody has pity on me, my cash app is dollar sign, <laughs> Pastor EGV. <laughs> I took the kids to breakfast, and, um, and after they ordered all of their food, uh, they started coloring on their kids' menus. Start doing the little maze, and Eric Jr. loves the crossword puzzle, and Sharice likes tic-tac-toe, and, um, but they, they have a proclivity, uh, Sharice in particular, for breaking crayons. And so I always, in advance, ask our, our waiter or waitress if they can give us an extra pack of crayons uh, to prevent a meltdown in the restaurant. And, and I encourage Sharice, be, be gentle with your crayons, right? Be gentle with your crayons because uh, we didn't buy these. And so without fail, uh, she breaks the crayon. Uh, the first two were unintentional. The second two were not. And I was frustrated with her. I said, why would you, why would you do that? And, I'm sorry, Daddy. And she got upset even though she broke the crayons. And she moved them to the side of the table and she folded her arms and started to pout. And she was tempted to take her brother's crayons because his crayons were still whole and intact. and He keeps his stuff the right way. And I said, Sharice, you can still use your crayons. She said, I can't use them, Daddy. I broke my crayons. And I took the crayon and I peeled the paper off one of the broken ends. And I said, look, broken crayons still color. And church, that's what I'm trying to help you to understand. That you may be broken, but there's still some, some color that that can be used to illustrate the lives of somebody else. Broken crayons still color. Broken lives can still be a blessing. God can still use you even in the midst of your brokenness. It's hard because I'm broken but still expected to be brilliant. I'm punctured but still expected to be powerful. 
If you try to do it in your own strength, you can't do it. But there's something that happens when a broken person decides to stop looking inward and to start looking upward. That's why, that's why those old songs mean so much to me. I can see my great granddaddy now with blind eyes, head tilted back in his chair, singing, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know if thou would draw thyself from me. Oh, whether shall I go in the midst of his brokenness? Jesus decides to attend to the needs of the people. The Bible says that he has compassion on them. Jesus was in need of compassion, but he had compassion on them. He was met with a problem that seemed to be insurmountable. They were in the middle of a deserted place where there was no provision. And all they had was two fish and five barley loaves. But in the middle of his brokenness and in the middle of a deserted place, he takes items that seem to be insufficient and he looks upward. A broken man in a dry place with a bunch of people and few resources doesn't decide to look inward. He decides to look upward. And can I tell you, brothers and sisters, if you're going to push past your grief in 2024, you can't look inward. You've got to look upward. It was in looking upward that he took in the middle of that deserted place those few resources. He took it. He blessed it. He broke it. And he gave it back. I'm trying to help you to understand that nothing about his situation changed. John the Baptist was still dead. Herod was still ruling. Folks were still coming after him. He still needed his personal time. And yet it did not disqualify him from being used by God to be a blessing to other people. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, that when you decide to look upward... God will give you the strength to make it through things you didn't think you'd be able to survive. God will give you the fortitude to withstand things that you think would take you out. And if you're going to push past your grief, it starts not with looking in, but looking up. I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. All of my help comes from the Target self-help section. And all of my help comes from my insurance provider. All of my help comes from my employer who signs my paycheck. All of my help comes from my spouse who makes my liver quiver. No. All of my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And I just come to tell somebody that you can be grieving a whole lot of things. Folks don't have to die for you to be grieving. You can lose a whole lot of things that cause you to grieve. You can lose your sensibilities. You can be grieving that. You can lose your joy. You can be grieving that. You can lose your sense of direction and purpose. You can be grieving that. But I dare you, instead of looking inward, to start looking upward to the God who's able to lift you even in your brokenness and help you to be a blessing to somebody who does not know his name. And I don't know about you, but I have decided to push past my grief today. Buried my granny last year. How do you keep on preaching? How do you keep on preaching, Pastor, when your family's fighting? Right, right, right. Folks are hitting you up for money who never gave you any. How? how? <laughs> it's because I've learned to stop looking and to start looking. 
How, how, how is it? How, how, how is it? How is it, Pastor, that you can keep on preaching when it seems like even somebody who has, has to pay $83.3 million and still seems to have a clear path to the White House is getting ready to be right back in. How, how, how do you keep trusting? Because I stopped looking inward and start looking upward. And if you, my brother and my sister, are going to push past your grief and your struggle, don't look inward. Look upward. I, I, know, I know folks are still pulling on you. You always have to be the strong one. You never get a chance to break, never get a chance to cry, never get a chance to just take time for yourself. You, you feel like you're at your wit's end, ready to lose your mind. Keep on looking up. You can make it. You can survive it. You can get through it. As long as you commit yourself to look in the pastor, you don't know how broken I am. I never thought I would be like this. I just need, I just need some time. But can I tell you, God sees you where you are. God knows all about what you're going through. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. God, he knows. And he has not forgotten about you. Don't allow yourself or your circumstances, your suffering and your grief to make you think that God has forgotten about you. What, what if, what if, what if God assigned the multitudes to follow Jesus? What if God used Jesus' assignment to pull him out of the lonely place he was in? God has a strange way of using people and using situations to pull us out of our own pity parties. We're pushing past our grief. I pray that God gives you the faith to keep pushing. I know it's hard, but keep pushing. I know folks are pulling on you, but keep pushing. Even in your brokenness, God is not through with you yet. The doors of the church are open. Deacons are coming as we stand all over the room as we are able. Maybe you're here today. You're ready to give up on God and on church. You've retreated to a lonely, deserted place. Because you convinced yourself that if God cared about me, I wouldn't be going through what I'm going through. Can I suggest to you that everything that we go through isn't just for us? Sometimes God allows us to be broken to show broken people that you can still color. I don't know who you are today. I don't know where you are, on site or online. But if you're here today, you want a relationship with the one whose body was broken for you and for me. You want Christ. You want to be saved. Tired of living how you're living. Tired of retreating to the deserted, lifeless places. You can be saved today. If you're here, you ought to come. You ought to step out on faith. Maybe you're here and you're saying, Pastor, that's not my story. I'm saved. I'm in relationship with God through Jesus Christ. But I'm looking for a church home. I'm looking for a place to grow and connect 
where I can learn about God, where I can have the truths of the Word of God open to me and explain to me so that I can live a life that is pleasing before God. If that is you, just come on today. Music ministry is going to bless us, but if you're here, main floor, balcony, on-site, online, we invite you to come today. If you're worshiping online, if you have a need, just type it in the chat right now. Baptism, new member, prayer. If that's you, we're ready to minister to you even right now. My brother, my sister, this invitation is extended. If it's for you, give God your heart. Give me your hand today. We're waiting on you. I need you to survive. We're going to push past this. God bless you. Come on, we're going to push past this today. God bless you, brother. Come on. Come on. This is your day. This is your time. If this word was for you, just come on today. The doors of the Lord's church are open. It is his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. Look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor, is pastor waiting on you today? Is pastor waiting on you? If you're here, just come on. I love you. Come on, we still got time. We still got time. Are you here today? Are you here today? Are you here today? You pray for me. I love you. I need you. We're going to push past this. We're going to push past this. I love you.
You may be seated. Amen. Would you help me praise God for those who have responded to the invitation today? We have, among those who have responded, one brother who has come as a candidate for baptism. At 35 years old, he has decided to give his life to Jesus Christ. And we have another brother who has decided to come back home and unite with the Fairfield family by way of Christian experience. Somebody ought to be excited today. Somebody ought to give God praise today. We thank God for you. We want you to know that you have made the best decisions that you will ever make in your life. And we are so glad to come alongside you as pastor and your church family to walk with you in the newness of life. We want to invite you at this time to grab whatever belongings you have and follow our First Impressions ministry. We're going to pray with you. We're going to talk about your decision and all that it means for your participation in the kingdom of God and at Fairfield. And so, man, we're just so excited. We are excited. Can you get excited? Amen. We are excited about what God is doing in your life. So we invite you to stand at this time. Fairfield, let's celebrate one more time as they follow our First Impressions ministry. Amen. The name of the Lord be praise. Amen. Can we thank God for our deacon's ministry as well? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, just before we make ready to go, brothers and sisters, we would ask that you would please remember all of the announcements that have been shared, all of the announcements that have been shared. Uh, Homegoing service for Brother Giles will be this Friday. This Friday, February the 2nd, asking all those who are able uh, to support Sister Giles that you would be kind enough to do so. Amen? Amen. At this time, we will have a special announcement brought to us uh, by Deacon Daryl Owens. Amen. Bless, bless you, uh, Fairfield. Thank you, Pastor. Brotherly, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this I do. Forget those things that are behind, reach forward to the things before. I reach toward that prize of the high calling. What is that high calling? He just told us that upward call. I reach forward to the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. What is Paul saying? What is Paul saying? He's saying, keep pushing. Keep, what's our pastor been telling? Did he just not pour into us? Amen. Did he, did he not pour into us? Amen. He keep telling us, push it forward. Keep pushing. Amen. Well, that is going to be our theme on February 25th, which is our pastor's anniversary. Amen. Did you? Listen, listen, Fairfield. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, that, that was okay. But let me tell you something. Fairfield is blessed. We was given a gift. You know what that gift is that God gave Fairfield? Right there. Our pastor. He gave us the gift of an awesome preacher. Amen. Would you please help me thank God for that gift that he gave Fairfield? Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you. All right, real quick. February 25th, we will hear from Reverend Kelvin Cosby of St. Stephen's Baptist Church of Louisville, Kentucky. He will bring us the word. We're going to wear blue and gold, and we're going to thank our pastor. Now, uh, more information will come, but just know that this man continuously to pour into us. Amen? So let's remember him on that day. Amen? Amen, amen. Thank you. name of the Lord be praised. Amen. We want to also say uh, happy birthday and happy anniversary to everyone who is celebrating this week. If you are celebrating, uh, we salute you and acknowledge you. And we also uh, acknowledge today. Today just so happens to be the birthday of our media director, Minister Cleon Fraser. Amen. 
praise God for him. And uh, we just thank God uh, just for today. Just for today overall, God has been good to us. Can we praise God for this men's choir today? Amen. For, for these musicians and amen. For glad, didn't glad bless us today? Amen. And to all these ministers and deacons and deaconesses, our mothers, we thank God for you. Our ushers again, security, ministry, and uh, everybody who's anybody and so first impressions, everybody, everybody, we thank God uh, for you. We praise God for our First Lady Emerita, who's here as well. And uh, for our pastor emeritus in his absence, uh, today is his last Sunday supporting uh, Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. And he'll be with us. He'll be back home. And so we praise God for him. Amen. I thank God for each and every one of you. I hope and I pray uh, that you have a safe and enjoyable Sunday and week. And that you would be reminded that you can push past grief if you look upward. And trust in the God who has promised never to leave, neither forsake us. Again, to all of our first-time worshipers, we praise God for you. Thank God for your presence. We want you to come back the first time you visit your guests, the very next time your family. Come on back and be a part of what God is doing here at Fairfield Baptist Church. As always, I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. As we rest upon our feet, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Oh, bless him. Praise him, all creatures. Here below. Praise him above. Ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son. And Holy Ghost. God said unto Moses, tell Aaron and his priestly sons. And when they bless the people of God to give them this blessing, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. May the Lord God Almighty bless you in your down setting and your uprising as you come and as you go in the city and in the field, in your joy and in your sorrow, in your labor and in your leisure. Be blessed, my brother. Be blessed, my sister. Until we meet at the feet of Jesus where there's neither sunrise nor sunset. To him be glory in the church now and forever. And all of God's people said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Bless you.